Hello everyone, welcome to Feed the Beast. This is sort of an update to an older tutorial, uh, which was on my scrap engine. You, I did not do that right. Right, there we go. So, as you can see, I've got a new skin for this, because I'm a corporation inside of Feed the Beast, and I'm looking rather dapper in my white suit. Uh, let's get our customary armor back on. So, uh, yeah, this is... You may have noticed in the previous, in the last time I did it, a uh, tutorial, the world went wonky and went and actually went to night, so this little thing stops that, that's handy. Uh, I tried, it was actually kind of difficult to uh, get the scrap engine working in Feed the Beast, because um, there is no block breaker, which meant I started off using the uh, electric stone breaker, which takes as much energy as you can provide it, so uh, I had... I, Spent a while just trying to work out some way to just strictly control the energy it was getting, but eventually I uh, I beseeched our Shelly friends, and now we have these versions. So, in scale of complexity to uh, simplicity, as far as mostly it's to do with the gate, um, we have our turtle, where our block breaker used to be. And he has a quick little program on him, he does cost three diamonds per, but I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, he has a great little program on him, but I'll show you that and over there, and I'll put it in the description most likely. Generator is in the same place, recycler is in the same place, wires are more or less in the same place. I realized I could put them directly under here, since I don't actually need a wire coming along to control anything. And this is an autarkic gate. And I've just got this very simple, it's never going to receive a redstone signal, so it's got its energy pulsar on, and that basically allows it to function as a redstone engine, but in the same space as the wooden pipe. So, out it comes. You can switch this for a gold pipe, especially in the sense they don't, they don't connect to each other. But, uh, I like to use stone pipes. Although you'll, if you do this in actual series, as we usually do for the engines, you're probably going to want to have this be alternate stone and cobblestone. Uh, okay, so yeah, you, the, everything else is more or less unchanged for this one. It's a 6x1x3 by by per, like, instance, and it's 18 blocks, that's what that is, but only 15 of them are used. That does include this block here and this block by the lava, uh, but you'll have to remove that one anyway to get down there, so it kind of counts either way, but depend it, a lot of this depends on exactly where you're building it. Uh, moving away from the autarkic, because that's kind of expensive, you need an ender pearl for every two of them. Uh, this is just a standard gate, which you can make using uh, a piece of redstone and about a bat box worth of power, I believe. And this one is instead putting out a redstone signal as long as it's not receiving one, which is powering this uh, redstone engine. So, similar thing, you have to move the wire that the energy for the, from the generators comes from up to here, uh, but that also serves quite nicely to contain the uh, lava, which I like. And kind of the same deal, uh, same size, same number of blocks, the same number used. This is actually very compact. And then we get to the bigger ones, if you don't want to use the gates at all. Uh, because we can't put a lever here uh, to control the redstone engine unless the redstone engine is outside of the system. Uh, so more or less everything is identical to the original version over there, but we have to go a block down to have a redstone engine and something to power it, in this case a lever. And that's larger, because it's using 17 blocks, uh, and it's 6x1x4. By by if we go around to the back, we can see that precisely which version you use affects how much uh, wire you need to go in from the MFE or whatever storage unit you're using to the transformer. Uh, the first and third need two pieces of wire, a low tra and the low voltage transformer and the storage device here is the MFE, so it's low voltage. You, if you have an MFSU, of course, you have to go to another level up with the uh, medium voltage. And if you have this one, despite it being smaller than the third one, it actually does require to have quite a bit more wire because you shift around where the output is. Uh, but that's still not that huge a cost because you can't just use uh, gold wire. And uh, so let's go see this in process and we'll also take a look at the total program because that's kind of the meat and bones of this version. Uh, it's sort of exploiting a bug wherein the turtles don't need fuel to break things but they do need fuel to move around. Which is a little counterintuitive but for, for our purposes, it's very handy, because it means we don't need to keep refueling these turtles. Uh, now, as you can see, they're just happily mowing along there. They keep a stack of cobblestone where as long as they can, uh, but they always put in whatever they can into the actual recycler beneath them. 
So if they sort of function like our block breaker, but they have their own storage in case for whatever reason the uh, the generator, the cobblestone generator gets broken. So it's sort of a backup supply to, cre to keep producing energy. And we can see these are happily working. Yep, no problems there. And this MFE is about a half full thereabouts. So let's take a look at the code, and that'll be the end of the tutorial. Now, it isn't very particularly uh, complex, you just need to go into the startup file like that. And that's basically it. The first chunk here, uh, from local to this first end on line 7, is just to do with making it easier to start the engine up, because um, the, one of the main problems with this engine is that if you log in and log out, or if a chunk gets unloaded, the turtles, they not, they're not moving so they won't disappear, but they can uh, sort of shut down and break. So this, this first chunk here is to help you reactivate them faster, because it means if you turn one of them on, then they'll activate all the ones uh, on all sides of them, and those ones will then do the same, so it'll just sort of ripple along the line and they'll all get woken up. So that's just a handy, helpful utility thing. The main bulk here is we select the first slot where we're going to be holding our uh, backup storage of cobblestone, and then this is the main loop that makes the turtle work. So if there is a block above the turtle, if turtle detect up, and if the turtle's item count inside of that inside of its storage slot is less than 64, then it it breaks the cobblestone above it. It then tries with turtle drop dot drop down to drop its stack of cobblestone into the infantry, namely the recycler, directly beneath it. If it can't do that, it will return null, it will do nothing. If it can only do it to a, to a certain extent, it will keep the remainder. So it keeps... If it, if, if it only needs like one or two pieces of cobblestone into the recycler, it will keep everything but those two pieces of cobblestone. And then we just have a slight sleep function here. Uh, this still allows it to break the cobblestone more or less as it is formed, as long as it has the space, but it also yeah, keeps the program from breaking because it doesn't like to run infinitely as long as it's uh, got stuff to do. So that just lets the program have a bit of a time off. I've got this installed on a floppy disk, so I can just uh, have a disk drive above them, and they will actually break the disk drive if I already start them doing that. Uh, I haven't seen the, a disk drive go through the recyclers yet, but who knows. Uh, oh, also one factoid I need to correct from the original tutorial for this, which is for Take It, is uh, I said I believe that it is a 1 in 10 chance that a piece of cobblestone will produce a piece of scrap. It is in fact a 1 in 8. So here we have 5, which if you, means basically if you extend this another 3 slots, then you'll have almost always a piece of cobblestone coming out, uh, statistically speaking. Statistically, statistically speaking, it could also be eternity, but that's a whole other story, I think. Uh, yeah, but that's more, uh, that's more or less it. So, I will post this code in the description as well, probably by a link to uh, some kind of text site or Dropbox. And you can type it out, have some fun with it yourselves, and I shall catch you next time. Bye!